What is up, everybody? Happy Wednesday to you. I feel so much better. I feel so much better. Like, I mean, I like when I get a cold, man, it's just horrible. And I like to throw the kitchen sink at it. Just basically drink a lot of tea, a lot of tea, and just try to up my immune system as much as possible. So I don't feel as miserable right now as I did earlier. Um, if you caught my live stream, I was just kind of just waking up um, from a early, early morning. Like I, I was up early because I went to bed super early. So when I would go to bed super early, I'm always waking up around three o'clock something in the morning and I'm just kind of up. And so I didn't do the live stream until probably around eight ish or whatever, maybe nine. Um, but I was talking about my perspective on the debate and how I thought it went. Definitely, you know, they came in there, squatted up against Trump. Um, Kamala Harris, definitely, I will say that she had more composure, posture, um, the appearance of conviction about her to the talking points that her puppet master were feeding her. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, she just really can't stand on anything that is promising to Americans because, you know, the current administration that she's a part of, the Biden administration, Joe Biden, you know, just to remind everybody, is still the current president. And even though Kamala Harris is running for president, um, really, the economic fall that we see right now is is not on Kamala Harris is on Joe Biden, right? And um, obviously her being the vice president, you know, she looks bad as well, you know, talking about she's going to change, you know, the very things that she was a part of creating. So she just, I mean, it's, it's a tough spot to be in, really. And I just feel like, again, Kamala Harris is a fall guy, um, I think that she was kind of like the Biden fall guy. It's like we, I think the Democrats probably know that, you know, a lot of the things that they usually do during political cycle, cycles to demonize Americans are just not going to work this time. And so, and I think with this race card that they were playing with Kamala Harris tried to really kind of sell her with that same valor as they were selling Barack Obama, just not working, right? Um, there's a, just a number of those talking points that she made. She said something about, oh, we inherited this mess. It's like, well, I mean, honestly, you guys were coming in post-pandemic, right? Y'all come in, of course you inherited a mess. Of course you inherited a mess. You know, people were being furloughed, right? People were being furloughed and laid off in 2020, right? So, you know, and a lot of companies with all the retooling and the, in, the endless pandemic, right, when they finally did kind of open up the economy, you know, a lot of companies didn't bring a lot of those people back that they fired. Matter of fact, so many people kind of pivoted into trying to take their chances in the small business space, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a legitimate but fallacious argument. But Trump won just because he just had the strongest argument. Like his, And the reason why his argument was stronger is because people kind of have a comparison of how they felt about their economic empowerment when they were, you know, under the Trump administration and how people feel about their economic empowerment being under the Biden-Harris um, administration and a lot of people just have felt short squeeze. Um, they feel like any hope or dreams that they have of kind of meeting whatever you know life goals that they may want for themselves is just becoming an illusion, you know, under an administration like this. And I think a lot of people are just getting tired of just feeling so economically pressed, you know, and, and that's, and that's reasonable, right? So anyways, the Super Bowl, right? I was, I was looking, catching this blog 
and this guy claims, and I guess the Breakfast Club might have touched on it too, that Drake is sending cease and desist assist to Rock Nation and Kendrick Lamar, you know, about um, not playing or performing the entire song to Not Like Us. And for those of you who kind of don't understand to me the the knowledge, the, the concept of Not Like Us beyond it being a rap diss to another artist, right? You know, he was really sort of taking stabs at these gatekeepers. And these gatekeepers come in many colors. And I, and I think the reason why some of your real top rappers have had beefs with Drake over the years is that Drake has really elevated himself through a lot of artificial propping um, and investment to be like this top rapper, right? Because he's making hits, he's doing this, he's always charting. He has a team and machine that's always making sure that Drake is on top because he's a $400 million investment and they want to recoup that, right? And But Drake can also serve as sort of like this Ponzi scheme. He can sort of serve as like this Ponzi scheme, you know, if you will, you know, middleman in the hip hop industry where he can raise other artists, right? Make a lot of money off of their talents and everything. Give them a couple of random temporary deals and just basically leech off of them. And, you know, not like us is to me one of those things where there are certain people who like to cosplay as black but at the same time, you know, they're not really strongly rooted in what it really means to be black. And a lot of them are leveraging black people for their own game. And they don't really care about black people at all. And Drake um, has been sort of narrated as being one of those people. Um, and I believe those narrations on so many different levels because obviously he has a leverageable side that most black hip hop artists do not have. Right? Um, but he's sitting in cease and desist because he doesn't want the Edo file aspects of that song to be published because Not Like Us is a very catchy song. Once you start playing it, I have the song on repeat. I know every single lyric to that song. Like, you know, it's just a very catchy bop. You know, you go to the clubs and they say Kendrick can make club bops. Well, he proved them wrong. And he made the ultimate diss track or one of them. Um, but really, to me, that's a foundational Black American Ados Freeman anthem that we are a distinct group of people. And there are a lot of people that want to keep us down. They want to be like us. All the while, they, they want to leech off of us. They want to be like us. They want to rob our intellectual property and value, right? But they want to continuously narrate us as being lower and inferior. I don't know a lot of people who will sit there and try to copy people that they perceive to be inferior and leech off of them. But yet here we are, and this is the world that we live in, right? They want to act like black people are so low denominator, but it just seems like some of these people can't even look appealing without black people. It's crazy. But I got to believe that this is something that Drake is doing because obviously that particular line you know, he took a, I think Drake is really taking a huge career hit after that rap beef. And it's his own damn fault because you shouldn't be playing with people. See, some people like to throw rocks, hide their hand, and they think that they just got so much leverage on another person that that person can't come in with less leverage, right? And ether them. And that's where basically it was a reality check to the industry on so many different levels that 
it doesn't matter how big you try to make your artist right if your artists think that they're just a sniper for the industry and they can go after any anybody people like Kendrick Lamar will give them a reality check and then go on home to his family and, and do what a good um brother Israel will do and provide so i mean i think that you know Drake is trying to save or salvage whichever whatever is left of his career and having Kendrick Lamar really just perform is it's bad enough that Kendrick Lamar is headlining the Super Bowl but it's going to be 10 times worse when you have that huge Super Bowl audience talking about you're stri- trying to strike a chord and it's probably a minor and when the whole Super Bowl crowd is saying that and you Drake trying to look and gamble on the Super Bowl in peace because you owe a whole lot of money people money right if you're Drake you owe a whole lot of people money right now right you got front end stuff you need to get that back they need to recoup they own you right that's the last thing you need a huge Super Bowl crowd singing about you, especially in the era of Epstein Chronicles and all of these people, you know, sort of revealing these rings, uh, high elite rings of edophiles and deviants of the kinds, these Baal and Moloch worship your Baphomet people. I bet you this is going to get flagged because these people don't want... The demons do not want people talking about them, but y'all, we know y'all real. We know how y'all got some of these people rocking. But anyways, you guys, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. I didn't have anything else on my radar. Shout out to Shannon Sharp. Great interview with Marlon Wayans. I really do find the Wayne's family to be a great swan song to the black American community. And they're definitely on my black American heroes list. So, you know, when we're going into black history month, um, my people, uh, there's a couple of people that I require to be on my kids list. And, and I don't let my kids do the usual suspect slaves and civil rights folks. Um, Ursula Burns, Barry Gordy, Lonnie Johnson, the Wayans brothers, um, and the Wayans family. These are all good people to have your kids do for Black History Month. That's just my take. We need to start showing a progressive look of Black Americans and Ben Carson we need to show those things, right? Beyond these usual suspect who the Democrats think that our kids should be glorifying, right, with their usual suspect list, you know, challenge the system. And I've been doing that. And I've been doing it now where the teacher tried to be slick last year. And I didn't even know who my daughter was doing for Black History Month, right? Because they are just so adamant on our kids covering slaves. And sure enough, my daughter did a history project on somebody who was a slave. These people are undercover bigots and so are their curriculums. So that's why you have to do your due diligence as a black parent at home to at least weave in one hour of tribal lessons and history, world perspective and logic teaching with your kids because these people are not remotely trying to condition our kids into having that pattern of thought. They're trying to disenfranchise them with all these struggle junkies. Obviously, they're trying to maintain black marginalization um, and all that good jazz. So, you know, anyways, um, yeah, and then you got puppets like Tiffany Haddish. It's like, this girl is, oh my God, this girl is just, uh-uh. Mm. Let me stop. Man, let me stop. But anyways, let me see. Diddy's paying people off. I don't really like to cover 
the Epstein of hip hop, AKA Sean Diddy Combs. I don't really like to cover stuff like that because my thing is Diddy is sort of like the mask over to Epstein. They're, they they just really got all this stuff that they can reveal on Diddy. And I'm not saying that he's more righteous than Epstein, but they're shilling for all these other people, right? They're shilling for all these other people, right? They're doing their best to, you know, sort of narrate Diddy as this just big, you know, freak off. Like, it's like, first off, it's like if there weren't any minors at the freak offs and everybody were consensual adults, I don't really, you know, that's not news to me. People do swinging parties all the time. You know what I mean? If they're just into that. So that's just nothing for me. But I just think it's kind of funny that, you know, right around the time that Epstein, you know, he dies and all his little files come out, then all of a sudden, you know, they got to hurry up and put that same lens, you know, and start deflecting on Diddy, you know, the one that's alive and, or the one that we can see that's alive and not probably fleeing to some other nation of asylum. But anyways, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Um, I, a lot of people think that that debate was rigged and I do believe that it was, um, because I mean, especially when it came to that question about, um, the eating the dogs, like he was like, oh, they're eating dogs or something. And that anchor literally had locked and loaded some explanation or rebuttal from some city manager. I'm like, how, how are you real time having these types of rebuttals? Like, did you know what he was going to say? Like, I'm not sure about these manipulations, but that seems very, very, very much off to me. All right. But anyways, off that, I'm not covering anybody else's perspective on the debate because I've already shared my own. So catch that on my live streams tab. And if you like content like this, like, share, and subscribe. Bye.